Welcome everyone to Zero Effort Game Reviews, where I review games with zero effort. Today, the topic that we are going to be talking about is Hollow Knight. I have just finished this game. I believe I got the bad ending. I wanted to get the good ending, but I kind of burnt out. I got 89% after 28 hours of playing, with functionally not looking up any tutorials, and occasionally chat helping me. I wish to preface before I go into this review that I've never really played a Metrovania before. A lot of the Metrovania aspects to me, I thought were design flaws. After having a conversation with Shira Tone of my chat, I kind of came to the realization that this was an aspect of Metrovania's. So while most of these complaints might straight up be wrong, actually, no, nah, fuck it. These are the complaints of a person that doesn't understand Metrovania's and just wanted to enjoy the game. And I believe a lot of them are actually fair complaints, but maybe they were genuine design choices. And if that was the case, all good and dandy. But it was a frustrating thing as a person that never played these type of games, came into it and enjoyed the game, but was very frustrated by certain aspects of the fucking game. Primary being pacing, which I will go into detail later. Cool? Cool. Cool and dandy. Let's jump straight into it. Visual and art direction. Beautiful. Beautiful. Some of the best I've seen in like video games. When people call this game a masterpiece, and I'm just going to like straight up just, just fuck, like, the review is that the game is a masterpiece. I'm just here to like talk about it. That, that, that's all it is. If you just wanted to know if I think it's a masterpiece, it's a masterpiece. Now, fuck off. Anyways, visuals, beautiful. Art direction, this, this game is going to be timeless. I will play this game 30 years down the year, and I'll, like down the line, I'll still say that this game is beautiful to look at. The designs of the, ant, like, the enemies, and even in the gameplay and music, everything was well designed. There is not one single thing in this game that I was like, that was terribly designed outside of pacing. But yeah, visuals, beautiful. Like some of the level designs in terms of like the garden areas, the moss areas, the acid lakes, the deep fucking nest, <sighs> hollow nest, crystal, like just the level designs and the mobs that are in there and the way that the mobs interacted, everything, beautiful. 10 out of 10. Got nothing more to say about it. Absolutely stunning. Music and sound design. Music kind of reminded me sometimes of like the piano um, scenes in Game of Thrones. But yeah, overall, loved it. Very few times I'll listen to a score and be like, I want to learn it. I felt that several times while playing this game. They nailed it in terms of the music department. And when they needed to have a little bit of emotional, they, they knew when to kick in the music at the right time. They put a lot of time and effort into the music. And I can appreciate that. Also sound design, really good. I want to, and like the mobs and all that sort of stuff and the way your like weapon works, all these sort of things were good. But I want to make a special point. These game designers, Team Cherry, you guys are assholes. You know, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And that might just be how Metrovania's work. But these guys dis dis distinctly created a grub sound called and then created crows that suicide dive bomb you for two fucking damage. They make very fucking similar sounds like so you, thinking that this is a grub, walk over and then get dive-bombed by these motherfucking birds over and over again. The amount of souls that I have lost because of this fucking trick. You bastards. But, good game design. <laughs> so yeah, they took a lot of time and consideration into like the sound design. Awesome. Absolutely love that. In terms of story and character, I am a FromSoft lover. But over the years, I have come to not like, come to the realization, do I actually like the story or do I like the story that Vati Vidya has been telling me? Did I actually know what the fuck the story was in Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3? Hell no. Someone had to explain it to me. Same thing with the um, Hollow, Hollow Knight. I, I, I honestly don't know if I understood the story from the thing or it's because I already kind of knew the story from everyone telling me about what the fuck happened in the story. So yeah, but minus that, the actual story in itself really cool. The idea of like gods and like altar gods like fighting over like the the well being of the people and how it fucked over everyone and how the other god would just want to come back with the vengeance. How you're literally the spawn of the previous king, who was a selfish dick. If you yeah, like, you know. And he comes back to like, you know, because he's he's called he was created for the purpose to control, like uh, to contain the other god. 
and he just came back to fulfill the purpose and there's several endings one good one evil where like you know the e like the void which is like you know a certain entity power just like consumes everything or you know you kill the other god or you trap the other god you some well, some versions you live some versions you become the enemy you don't know but yeah honestly story was really really good but the, the highlight, I think, was the characters. I love the characters. The characters were very memorable. I seldomly re remember shit when it comes to names. Quill, I remember. Grub Daddy, ooh, I remember. Um, the ah, the shopkeeper lady. It's like, ba -ba 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 -ba. The map dude. Like, this is what I mean. The sound design of this game is fucking good. Because some of the sound cues that they have in this game are ingrained into my mind because of how memorable they are. And if that, if that ain't saying how good the sound design was, I don't know what is. But I want to I want to tell a special story. This kind of goes into the, my gameplay breakdown, but just hear me out. So I basically played this game in the worst fucking way humanly possible, and I fucked myself over severely. Seven to eight hours into the game, I rock up at a place called Deepness with zero fucking upgrades and zero fucking idea where I am or where to go, and I got fucked. I got trapped there. I, I got to a bench, and benches are saving locations that refill your HP and everything. Regardless, rock up there, got trapped in Deep Nest, and then proceeded to spend the next hour or two trying to fucking get out. It was a nightmare. One of the most stressful fucking like gaming experiences that I've had in a while. 10 out of 10 game design. But at the beginning, you meet this character called Cloth. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to fuck everything up. And you're like, oh, yeah, oh, cool, whatever. Rock up. I'm lost for an hour or two. Find a different location, finally, where it, there's a different chair. I'm like, you know what? I think I'm close to the exit. And I find Cloth. And she's there. Just dejected and just being like, I'm so done with life. This place is scary. I thought that I could do it. I don't think I can do it anymore. And there was a soul boom, like, just connection to this lady. And I was like, you can do it. And eventually, we both got out. And then I see her in a different place. And she's like, oh, how are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm doing good. Oh, you don't actually say that. I was just saying to her. Every single time I saw her, my eyes lit up. Because I'm like, oh, it's you again. Hi. And then I'm finding, like, another boss. And then she just comes out of fucking nowhere and just, like, flattens one of the enemies. I'm like, yes, girl. Fucking, fucking go for it. And then she gets brutally murdered but she kills the boss and i'm like yeah and then she's like oh yeah i'm gonna go to heaven now but it was cool i died a warrior's death that was pretty awesome i'm like cool and then i immediately hit her with a dream nail and murdered her <laughs> but for the time being cool interaction very memorable. One of the most memorable gaming experiences. I will honestly say it, this game had some of the most memorable fucking characters and my most memorable experiences that I've had in gaming in a while. Yeah, so I just want to reiterate. This game is a fucking masterpiece. Just, it's just a masterpiece. I'm just talking about this game at this point. But the gameplay. Now, once again, I want to reiterate. I do not know if this is just a part of Metrovania. I like, um, like design. But. But. There is a severe pacing issue at the beginning of the game. And I think some of the design choices of what power-ups you get first, I kind of get. I do understand that they, I think they believe that if you gave the player double jump, the game became too easy at the beginning. But also, they gave double jump at, like, basically end-game content, and it's also incredibly missable. In the first seven to eight hours, I looked in every single nook and cranny. And the majority of the game is just like, oh, you don't have this tool? Fuck off. You don't have this tool? Fuck off. You don't have this combination of tool? Fuck off. It was just that. Constantly. So by the time I rock up to this place called Mantis Village, and I basically, with no upgrades, kill the fucking Mantis, with some amount of difficulty. But I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then... Apparently, you're not supposed to go there. You're supposed to go to the central of the city, which one NPC kind of mentioned that you should probably go get upgrade your nail and go to the center of the fucking city. And I'm like, yeah, I've been trying to do that for the past fucking seven, eight hours. I just don't know how. Maybe it's the lantern. But hey, I've checked every other option, and this place still goes into a, a certain way. So, and that is how I got lost in Deep Nest. And once I got out of Deep Nest, I came to the realization that I think I need the lantern. 
and I used the lantern to finally get into the City of Tears, which until later down the line, I met a person that explained to me how Metrovanias work and that the exploration part of finding new tools and finding new creative ways to solve these puzzles is the primary selling point of this game, which I'm like, that is fair. I, as a person that didn't know this and only came from platformers, was kind of annoyed that every single direction that I wanted to go in progress just said this to me. And then when I'm like, where the fuck do I get this? Can I have any sense of direction of where I'm supposed to go? And then he's like, no, no, no. There was a way to actually get into it. I'm like, how? Oh, uh, once you killed the Mantis Lords and then you jumped and then dashed and then jumped again with using the Mantis Claws, you could have gotten into the city. I like to reiterate, after the game telling me like 30 to 40 fucking times you can't go in this direction because you do not have the tools, I naturally presumed when I got to that location that this man had distinctly explained to me that you needed a double jump. Because it was perfect double jump height. It didn't click to me that I could use the tool that I just got in with a dash to get into the city. In this, I want to express two solutions that I think, whether or not you give a fuck, doesn't matter. Why the fuck is the Lanta 1,800 fucking geodes? Make it 900 or 800, because then I would have actually been able to afford it and actually used it in my exploration. There were three instances of darkness that I was like, oh, I wonder what's in here. But 1,800 geodes at the beginning of the fucking game is a hard price to explain. And... Functionally, at that point, there is only one fucking way into the city unless you got that fucking lantern. Which, once again, is not obvious because no one else tells you how to get into the goddamn city outside of go to the city. So on that note, if you're not going to make the lantern cheaper, can we at least at least get like some sort of charm at the beginning that helps you farm geodes? That would have been good. There is technically a dude in the fungal wastelands and give it to you, but it breaks. And when you're like poor and you're trying to save up for stuff and the G, the G, the, the fucking charm, which are power ups, which I'll go into later. If the charm that gives you money breaks and you need to spend more money to repair it, it's a bit of a dick design, right? It's very anti-player friendly, in my opinion. If you just added that thing to Dirtmouth, the beginning area, so I could actually farm a little bit, so I could get the components to actually move and explore a little bit more, would have been nice. You've already got, like, mechanisms that punish the player for dying twice. Just give them a way to farm so that they can afford the fucking tools to actually explore. God damn. Or, at the very least, have an NPC that if you are struggling... Give this player a sense of general linear direction of go look in the fungal wastes. Then I would have gone around the fungal wastes and trial and errored everything at that point in time. But the game philosophy is just fucking figure it out. I almost quit. I quit this game four times in a row. This was the fourth time, five, fifth time that I've decided to sit down, make a review of this game and finish it. And I had to watch a review in the middle of the VOD from one of the, like, the video reviews that I absolutely love for him to tell me that this game was a massive piece and that that gave me the confirmation that I want needed to push forward because I quit. I'm not the only one. I've had plenty of friends that played this game several times and all of them quit because of the beginning pacing issue for anyone that did not play in Metrovania is terrible. Shirotone, one of the followers in my fucking stream said, well, this game wasn't designed for everyone. It was designed for people that love Metrovanias. That is a fair criticism. But I am not coming from a, like, look, per, from a position of a person that plays Metrovanias coming into it. This game is fucking amazing. This game has a lot to offer in terms of story, visual design, just in, even in gameplay. It is a fun fucking game. It just has severe pacing issues at the beginning. And if you fix that, the majority of people that never experienced Metrovanias would be able to fucking enjoy this game. 
it might have been an oversight. It might have been a mistake. It may be something that you guys rectify in the future. I am just expressing it because this game was awesome. And I had to... This was... it. I quit four times because I just got lost and I just didn't care. Because some of the cool tools and the cool things in the game come after midpoint. And I don't know how to get to the midpoint. I had to play eight hours of just figuring out trial and error everything. And I still couldn't fucking figure it out. Just a small gripe. Now, to go actually into the gameplay, gameplay function figures out like you're a little knight, you have a little nail, and then you can upgrade that nail, you have HP, you can gather four little mask shards to upgrade your HP. There's a thing called the soul vessel, which I think is a really, really fucking cool concept in terms of you hit something and you gain soul vessel and soul. And as you gain more soul, um, these souls can be used to regen your HP. So the more offensive you are, and even if you take damage off the combat ends, or during combat if you are smart, you can regen your HP. Now, naturally, when you finish, like, regening HP, like, when, once, like, you make your soul vessel bigger, my natural thought was that the soul vessel will just get bigger, like, linear, like, just the actual thing. No. They create smaller circles next to the bigger one. And at first, I didn't understand why they would do that. But then I realized design genius. You are limited to like two to three like bursts of energy, like um, your like skills or healing. And then you have to wait a couple of seconds or two for the smaller things to refill the big one. So you still have more soul. And you still can utilize it differently. You just can't spam your abilities or spam heal. In a certain like, but it's fine when you're out of combat, but in combat it prevents that. That's really cool game design. I actually want to applaud whoever the fuck came up with that idea, or w whether or not you stole it. Don't doesn't matter. That was a fucking cool idea. <laughs> now onto one of my favorite parts of the game: charms. You get charms, and then um, you fit these charms into slots. Certain charms like have one slot. Certain charms like require three slots, and you can upgrade these slots to get them bigger and bigger and bigger. So you can all sorts. The mix and matching of this was fucking fun as hell. Like you attack faster, your like attack animations come out faster. Like your jump speeds are increased, your dash speeds are increased, or like you regen HP, or like when you receive damage, you do thorns. The amount of like mix and match potential with these combinations are fucking endless, and they were fun. Halfway through the game, I found this weird ass. It's a really bad strategy where once you take damage, the invincibility frames is increased by a couple of extra like split seconds. So with this, I added attack speed so I could whack the enemies as much as humanly possible while I was in the invincibility frame. Then I added thorn damage to it. So once I got hit, I damaged them and then I immediately started hitting the living shit out of them. Then I got another fucking charm, which increased the amount of soul I get once I whack something. And then the final piece of the puzzle faster healing. So when you heal, it just goes Now with the faster healing goes So what happens is I face tank shit, thorn damage, and just bash the living crap out of them. And once they're staggered, reheal all the damage I received and just face tank again until I beat functionally majority of the game <laughs> after the midpoint. Of course, this strategy doesn't work on a lot of the end game stuff for good reason, but it did work for a fair amount of the content. And it was really fun finding that combination. It was it was very memorable. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. The world, I will say, although like my first issue was, was the pacing issue at the beginning, honestly, by the time I hit midpoint and exploring everywhere and finding things was really, really fun and cool. I still have the argument that um, a lot of things weren't, didn't make sense. Or I was trying to kill one of the th third dreamers, which is just a, like a boss to kill to get to the final boss. And there are so many levers and they don't necessarily fucking all concede into one the same direction. So I didn't know I hit it. I naturally thought that I didn't hit. I did hit it. And then only after like wandering around the same location for like, what, 30 to 40 minutes, I realized, did I hit this? Hit it. 
And then I realized that I basically locked myself out of this region for like, what, the past like four or five hours because I thought that I hit that lever and there was no indication that it, that it was hittable. So most of my gripes, like the exploration is cool, but a lot of like the quality of life things or slow, like help, help, small nudges in the direction just don't exist. It's just, just the game just believes that you are an incredibly intelligent, smart video gamer that's played Metrovanias. And that's my gripe. Once again, if it wasn't made for that type of person, that's fair. I'm talking from a person that does not have experience and wish that this was a little bit more accessible to the general public. Like a lot of people, even if it was, they wouldn't like it. But like for me that loves games, I, I still came into this and it was a struggle to push past some of those elements. But I will say those moments where I pushed past and I found the world getting bigger and bigger and bigger and the story becoming larger was one of the coolest gaming experiences I've had. That's like Elden Ring. Like I'm like, oh yeah, this world is massive and cool. And I'm like, wait, how big is the map? And you zoom out and you're like, holy fuck. <laughs> this map is massive. You guys, once again, beginning area had pacing issues, but in terms of the exploration and the fantastic world that you created and exploring it with the mobs and the placement and the Metrovania aspects, after like the midpoint of the game where I could actually just, I understood how to utilize these tools and I started looking for these tools and understood that these tools existed, the game, mwah. I still kind of find it annoying that like, um, unless I wanted to dedicate hours upon hours upon hours, I would not be able to figure out how to get the like other different types of endings. But I guess at the end of the day, those sort of endings exist for those players that really, really, really love the game and just explore every single nook and cranny and hit every little like nook and cranny, which isn't for me. I kind of want that sort of accessibility, but at the end of the day, I love problem soft games and I look up the Wikipedia and just do it anyway. So honestly, if I wanted to critique that aspect of it, I'd be a bit of a hypocrite. I still think it's slightly like not great, but if that's a natural part of those type of game designs, it might not just be something that I like that doesn't necessarily mean that it is bad. Yeah. Combat between, um, I think summoning, although I don't know how you use summoning because summoning kind of sucks. It would have been cool if they actually like leaned more into summoning like little minions and stuff like that. You could buff them up. That would have been cool, like difficulty scaling, you know, there's like magic, there's like um summoning and then there's like, magic and then there's like melee. Like it would have been cool if there was a little bit of that, but um, you know, we all, it wasn't that massive, but overall magic and um, melee was so satisfying that just didn't care. Yeah, gameplay was fucking amazing. So on that note, yeah, want to reiterate, I got 89%, took 28 hours. I will probably go back. I got like 35 out of the 40, 40 to 45 charms, and I probably will go back, collect all the charms, um, beat all the additional bosses here and there after I look up where the hell they are, because, um, yeah, I just I just don't want to spend like 50 hours in the game figuring out where everything is. That's just not, I, just, I just don't have that time. I'm an adult that plays video games. <laughs> I just want to play different type of games, you know? I'm not going to be, like, shoehorned into one type of game for, like, the next, like, year. So, yeah. Gaming is a masterpiece. Teen Cherry has done an absolutely fucking amazing job. It was a learning curve to understand. Because, once again, this was my first ever Metrovania. It was an experience. But all in all, I actually really enjoyed it. I was frustrated as fuck. Anyone that watches the vaults can see me physically be stressed out as hell. But some of the... I had some of the coolest gaming moments in Hollow Knight. So yeah, I don't usually do this, but I like to thank the developers. You guys made an amazing game. I am really looking forward to Silk Song. I didn't think I was. I didn't think I would care. I thought halfway through this game that I would never play Metrovania again. But you guys have sold me. Metrovanias are kind of cool. So yeah, masterpiece, great game. If anyone is watching this review and never finished it, get the lantern. And if you don't know where the fuck to go, fungal waste. I have just saved you seven fucking hours. There you go. Anyways, love you, everyone. Hope you guys have a lovely day. And I'll see you in the next review, which I don't know what's going to be. It's either going to be Spider-Man, Bioshock Infinite, who knows?